Okay, we're going to talk in, about this, and um, I'm going to give you some, some uh, always, always trying to validate what we say. Confirm with validity everything we teach. Okay, we put this defense in when I was a defensive coordinator at Montreal in 2012, improved in 14 defensive categories, had 48 sacks in the season, probably should have had 55, to be honest with you, if, for the ones we missed. Now, again, that's, that's 48 sacks in a season in pro football where they have all day to study you and all day to figure out what you're doing, okay? You can put this defense in. I could teach it to you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it while we're here this weekend. Then it's your job to take it and do with it what you want. But it is very, very, very simple, but it is also incredibly dynamic, so, my gracious. Yeah, I'm trying to get this done, man. Here we go. How come it won't go? Ha, what the heck? I was using my mouse this morning. Now I can't use my mouse. All right, let's talk about why we do it. Because you got to understand, whatever you teach, and it doesn't matter, there's a million ways to, do, to get things done, but you better understand why you do what you do. Don't just do things to do them or because you saw it on TV. If you don't come out of here understanding about this defense, then you shouldn't teach it because you owe it to your players to understand everything you teach. Number one, it's extremely multiple. You saw on Lee's tape, I saw all kinds of formations and motions. You're going to get, in this day and age in football, you better be able to adjust to everything. And you better be able to adjust to it fast. All right? It allows you to attack the offense from a variety of angles and positions on the field. We sold it to our guys this way. We are going to be a pressure defense. Everybody in the room is going to blitz. Everybody. Except me. All right? But everybody else is going to be involved in blitzing. And so we're all going to, we're going to teach you how to be a good blitzer. It's extremely simple. In our league, in our game, in pro football, what happens? Guys, we can't have 100 guys on our roster like they do in college. And you got a third-team Mike linebacker or a fourth-team Mike linebacker. And if a guy gets hurt, you just go to the next one. I'm telling you, I'm having a bad day at the office with this thing. Can I, <laughs> can I get some power? All right. You can't, you can't, in our league, you don't got a fourth guy or fifth guy. They don't, they don't exist. So if we have, if we're decimated at a, with an injury and we got to go out and get somebody, we may have to take a guy off the street on Tuesday and you got to play him on Sunday. That's life in pro football. Well, you can't junk your entire defensive system because you've only got three days to prepare. It has to be so simple and make so much sense that you can teach it like this, right? And again, that's what this thing is. Now, as we go through this, if I can get my man down here one more time. You'll see that how easy it really is. And how so much, how much sense it makes. Now, I'm going to ask all of you to do some, as we talked about, do some, do some self-evaluation. In your system, your offensive system and your defensive system and your kicking game system, what is your language? Because the language that you speak has to make sense to the players. And we want to be able to speak in very short sentences. You don't have time in, an, in a game between series to adjust on defense and have to speak in paragraphs. You have to have systems that allow you to speak quickly and words mean something, all right? So as you watch us, we are extremely simple in the way we teach. The language all fits together, all right? And we try and keep the language as consistent through our football team as we possibly can. All right? Now, when you are a 3 4 team, we talk about, and again, I say 30 because with all the formations and things you see now, <coughs> excuse me, you may not be in four linebackers very much. 
<coughs> but you still want to be based out of a three, a three down front. We have two ends and a nose tackle. We, are, we have four linebackers, and then again, four DBs. That's our base package, okay? So when we talk in terms of base, because you have to have a starting point, all right? And when we look at this, you're going to see that the starting point is what we call a zero nose. Now, a zero nose is anybody, you, if you, in our system of telling the players where to line up, which is the first most important thing, alignment first, assignment second, technique third. All right, write that down because if you don't teach that way, I'm just telling you, after all my years of doing this, you're teaching it wrong. All right? Alignment, assignment, technique. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. All right, it's extremely simple. It requires fewer big people. Any, any level of football. I've never been in a place yet where, every, where, where they said, well, we've got too many big guys. We've got too many big guys that can't play. I've been in a lot of places. I just heard Lee Rowland say it. He, what, kind, what kind of players is Lee coaching? What kind? Midgets, right? It's like, <coughs> it's like going to uh, Lilliputian land over there because he's got all midgets. It puts more speed on the field. The game today is a game of speed. The game today is a game of speed because the game now is played out in space. All right, so you have to be able to put speed players on the field. It easily adjusts to all offensive formations, motions, and personnel groups. All right, let's talk about selecting personnel. Guys, I'm going to get down to, this is, this is it, right? I'm not going to just give you a bunch of clinic talk and here's the fronts and this is what we do. I'm going to tell you how to do it, what to pick, who to look for. Nose tackle. All right, number one, he has to be strong and typically he has to be a bigger guy. He needs to take up space. Now, you have one with smaller ones, quicker ones. But in general, that's the guy you're looking for. It's the kid that's always at lunch 15 minutes longer than everybody else. All right? He's a big body. He takes up space, and he can command the double team. Now, he may not make a lot of plays statistically when you look at him but he has to be your anchor point because defense is built around that, this defense in particular, all right? The ends, okay? The ends must be technique and leverage sound players, right? You can win with less than average guys. In the 4-3, you better have a war daddy at, 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 the, under, at the over tackle. You better have Warren Sapp because it's all built on that. Right? I don't know about you, but I don't see a lot of him walking around. Now, I can get you Brett Kiesel. So you Pittsburgh Steelers fans know who I'm talking about. Right? I can get you a big, strong guy that plays within the scheme and does his technique perfect. Those guys exist. Warren Sapp, guys, there ain't a lot of them around here, man. Let's just be honest. Okay? So there, we're built, our country is built for this. Right? Now, they have to be unselfish. The defensive linemen in this scheme have got to be unselfish. That's got to be a part of their profile because they're not going to make as many plays as some of the guys around them. But they have to understand their role and they have to be unselfish and they have to be what we call a giver. Okay, let's talk about the linebackers. First, it's the outside linebackers. These are the Cadillac guys. These are the special ones. Now, they're typically bigger and more physical than the linebackers. They must have the skill set to play over a tight end, rush a tackle, and drop into coverage. And, and when you look at them, it's in that order. All right? Now, I would probably go back and say rush a tackle and play over a tight end because we see so little tight ends anymore. But that guy has got to be a guy that when the offensive coaches look at him, they go, we're not putting our back against him which forces them into protections that allow us to kick their muley, right? Because they can't slide it, they can't turn it. What's every offensive line coach's react or solution to a problem if they're getting beat? Well, let's just slide or turn the protection, right? Well, you do that, then you put the back on the end, and that's what we want, right? So what we say is you will never put your back against this guy. 
He's got to be able to beat a back consistently, and he's got to be good enough to rush a tackle. These are the ones. Now, what can they be? They can be a small 4-3 defensive end. You see some of those guys around now. The guys that I know that run this scheme in the NFL, what do they look for when they go to college? Because there aren't a lot of really good 3-4 teams in, in college football because of the nature of that game. They look for a 4-3 end and stand him up and put him on two feet, right? When, DeMar when Rob Ryan went to Dallas, he put DeMarcus Ware at outside linebacker. All right, he's a handful now. You're not going to put a back on him. Okay, so you're, again, forcing the offense into a protection issue, right? The, the buck linebacker or the strong side inside linebacker, what kid plays that? Find yourself a big, strong safety. Find yourself a small linebacker who can tackle well in space because he's going to do most of your adjustment in this defense, okay? So you're building a profile. Guys, I really think, I really want to stress to you, I, I just can't even, it, it can't even harp on it enough. Take time with the game. You should have in your scheme, if you're a defensive coordinator, you should have a job description for every position in your defense. I want this. These are the qualities, physical qualities, mental qualities, all of those things. Now, you're not going to get them all all the time, but how can you get what you want if you don't even know what you're looking for or haven't spent time on what you're looking for? All right, so that's the buck. He is the adjustment backer or the strong inside linebacker. The Mike can be the least athletic of the linebackers. He has to have good football intelligence, and he must be able to play well between the tackles. He doesn't have to be a great space player, but he has to be able to play in that box because a lot of the time in today's football, he's going to be the only linebacker in that box because we, I'm going to, again, you're going to watch this and you're going to go, you can't do that. Well, we do do it and we de did do it and we have done it and will continue to do it. It breaks some rules, but you have to think outside the box if you want to be involved in this kind of defense. And that's what we sell the players on. Okay, it's a little bit different. It's going to look different. Well, if it looks different to you, it's going to be really different to the offense. Now, here's our defensive alignments. Simple. If you line up over the center, head up, you're a zero. Over the guard, a two, a tackle, a four. Over the tight end, a six. We use very simple terms, right? If you take a shaded alignment, if you play two eye, you are looking, you are over the guard, but you're inside shade of the guard. Two O. Outside, I inside, O outside. It's, a, it's not a game for you know, real rocket science guys, okay? Simple. You can take any kid and teach him that in two minutes. This is how you line up. You're in a 2-0. Where's the 2-0, coach? Two's head up on the guard. Oh, I got you. It's outside, all right? It's that simple. That allows you, again, quicker communication during games to adjust. Gap responsibilities, we define all the gaps from inside out, A, B, C, and D. We are a gap cancellation defense, okay? Gap cancellation defense, the basis of our running game is that we will never allow vertical seams in the defense, okay? No vertical seam in the defense, all right? Because we believe that er from the day they invented football, and they, they put those poles on the sideline, they're 10 yards apart, and they get a first down for going that way, not for going that way, all right? So we are never going to allow them to go that way, and then we're going to use our speed, and we're going to track them down, all right? This is the base front. It is called 30. It is two four eyes, a zero nose, a six zero, and a six zero. That's our base way of playing. That's the first day one. That's what we teach. Now, here is, here is where it gets really different. Every technique up front has what's called a visual key and a pressure key. My visual key is who I look at. My pressure key is the guy that's most likely to hit me. So if I'm playing 4i, and if I can get two coaches to come up here, quickly, Raus Bitta. All right. You stand right there, you stand right there. No, facing me. All right, now, if I'm playing eye technique, any eye technique, any inside technique, we play what we call cheat, and we define every technique. We give it a name. A cheat technique means I'm going to line inside of him, but I'm going to look at him. 
and they look at you and go, what? No, you're going to line up in here and look at him because he's the one that's most important in telling you where to go. All right? Where's my gap? If I'm an inside player, it's that gap right there. That's a B gap. I'm a B gap canceler. The problem with watching him and, and not watching the guy inside is if he goes that way, what happens to that gap? Do you see what it did? It got big. And what did we say? No vertical seams in the defense. Right? So, same thing. If he goes down there and I go here, what's, what's happened to the gap? It's gotten big again, right? Can't have it. So I react to him. I step at him because he's the first one that's going to hit me. But whatever he does tells me what to do because that's my gap. And I cancel my gap before I do anything else. Okay? So now, you go down there again. Boom. Who's, is it a big gap? No, because that's my visual key. I re react to my visual key. All right? You come at me. You go there, boom. Is that gap big? Am I in my gap? Absolutely. It's no more complex than that. Don't make it hard. All right? So, thank you. I've got to be able to get in the proper stance because we said it's alignment, it's assignment, it's technique. Man, the game is played here and here. Okay? Are you watching me? Here and here your eyes and your feet, and then your hands, okay? I watch more young football players that just don't understand where to put their eyes. The number one first thing you better be able to tell them is where to put their eyes because your eyes will tell you if you trust your eyes, they'll put you in the right spot every down, okay? So my eyes are there. My first step is at my pressure key. Why do I do that? Because if I do get hit, Right? It's just drive, basic old drive block. I want to be in my gap, but I want to be stepping into contact. And it's a very short step. All right? And again, we'll get into all the techniques as we go, or I'll never get through this. All right? All right, here's what it looks like on tape. That's the Steelers playing it. You can see zero nose, two inside shades, all right? Outside backers. Now, look at the outside backer. This is what we teach the outside backer. We're a little different than them. They, they, you can see their linebacker on the outside in, you know, over the ghost. He's out in a square stance. We don't do that. We point our toe at the inside or the outside foot of the tackle because I want them to look at the hip of the tackle. And again, it may be okay to do that, but to me, now you really see what you need to see. Right? Because that tackle will tell you everything you need to know. That's the defense. Now, when you look at the depth of the linebackers, if you can see, the linebackers are basically four and a half to five yards deep. Against the dead eye, that's your normal alignment. If it's an offset eye, a tight end set, or whatever, your H-back set, you cheat up a little bit. If you're in a position where you can be blocked quickly by a fullback, the backside linebacker deepens his alignment because he's able to scrape. All right? Okay, that's 30. All right, here's 31. Now we're getting into our reduction fronts. You're going to see here in 45 minutes, we'll have more defense than you could play in a year. All right? We've got one front already. Now, here's the second front. It's 31. One is a weaker number than two. So what do we do? We reduce to the weak side. We play a 2-0 and a 4-I. doesn't change anybody's gap, but it does change who for the weak end. In this case, the right end. Just changes his, his visual key and his pressure key, right? Because if you're an O technique... Your visual key and your pressure key are the guy that you are aligned over. Okay, inside technique, I look inside, step to my pressure key. Outside technique, O technique, I step and look at the same guy. All right? Now, as we watch this, you're going to be fascinated by how multiple we can be, and we limit, I, I, we say to the defensive lineman, you're going to learn about six techniques. That's all you're going to ever need to know. All right? Now, if we want to reduce it the other way, we want to get to a strong front or a reduction front the other way. There's 31 by the Steelers. All right, there's 32. Now to the tight end side, which we consider strength. We are now eagled. We've got our 2-0 to the tight end. Now, just know this, and again, here's one of the rule breakers. We separate the front and the secondary. When I learned football in the old days, 
you, had, you did it this way. If you reduce the front to one side, you roll the coverage to adjust. We separate the secondary from the, from the front. Our front plays independent of the secondary. So you can't see us in some sort of strong reduction and say, okay, I know they're in some strong roll coverage because they have to be. All right? So again, these guys are going to play independent of one another. All right, now, there's 32 for you by the Steelers. You can see the four eye on the back side. I don't have that thing, I guess. You got the four eye on the back side, and you've also got the 4-0, or excuse me, the 2-0 on the front side. All right, Bear, this is the one we play more than anything else because I think it's the hardest front for them to block, and we want to make it hard on those guys, All right? This defense was developed in, in, by Buddy Ryan and it, with the Bears. Actually, it goes back further than that to Minnesota Vikings when he was a the coordinator there. It was, it was done. It, the, the front was actually developed to stop the run, and it's, they stumbled into a great pass defense a great way to rush the passer. Why is this hard for, for offensive line coaches? Because of what we talked about. It locks you into protections, right? Most times you see the offensive line and the quarterback, they come up and they go, 54 is the mic. Why are they doing that? Because they're telling the front which way to slide, right? Where the center's gonna go. You come up and look at us, you don't know who, I mean, you can call the mic if you want, but there's no guarantee that we're not going to bring the, somebody else, right? If, I'm a, if I play a 4-3 team, it's a walk in the park because I know where the rushers are. I got four of them right there. I know what's happening, okay? Here, not so easy. All right, now, we also have the ability to play tight. We want to move the front to the tight end. Guys, we got 30, 31, 32, bear tight. We already got five fronts in. Look at the techniques. How many techniques have we taught? Minimal, 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 minimal. You're playing a 4 0, you're playing a 4 I. You're playing a 2 0, you're playing a 2 I. And we got a shade nose and a zero nose. Open, we want to slide the front to the open side. That's our sixth front. Slant is a, is a one you have to teach because it fits with your blitzes. All right, and we, treat, we teach it this way S, strong, three man move to the tight end. Okay? Slant is a strong move by three guys. All right? Now, so there's another front. Plays the same. There you see it. Angle, away from the tight end. Slant, strong, angle, away. Okay, words that have meaning. Now, this is now our eighth front right here, men. Okay, now when we get to nickel, and I want to go quickly through nickel, we take the nose out in general. In general, because he's usually the worst pass rusher. We can leave him in in such a certain situations, but generally we take the nose out of the game. All right? When we want to get to nickel, and it gives us our 4 2 nickel, but it doesn't take our big pass rushers off the field. All right? 41, 42. All right, let's talk about linebacker play. How many fronts did we say we had? Forget the nickel. How many fronts did we come out of that with? Eight, right? We got eight fronts. You're the line coach at the next opponent. You got three days to practice, two days and then, then a walkthrough day. You got to block eight fronts in every one of your offensive plays or you're going to do what on offense? Eliminate, start to eliminate plays because you can't practice them all against all that stuff. What are we playing on defense? The, the ends have to play two techniques in all that, in all that defense. The nose has to play two techniques in all that defense. So when we practice one front, we're practicing all our fronts because we're teaching techniques and practicing techniques, not defenses, okay? So now remember, these are alignments, guys. These are not defenses. They're just ways to put players in position to make plays or to stress the offense. So as we look at it, we'll go through them now. There's 30, all right, in base. Now if we call jet, 30 jet, what we do is we take the buck to a pre-scrape position outside the tight end. What has to change? The 6-0 has to become a what? He has to be a 6-I in order for us to be gap sound. But now I've got that buck in a position in a race stance outside the tight end and an offensive line coach goes, oh shit. Right? Because they got an overhang. 
doesn't change a thing for us. We make an Indian, what we call Indian, which tells the, the six O to go to six I, because he's now got the C gap, and I'll take his D gap. It's just a pre-scraped linebacker. Does he have to, can he rush from there? Think so? Pretty good spot to rush from. Does he have to rush from there? No, why? Because it's a pretty good spot to drop from too. Because here's the Bucks line. This is the Bucks alignment inside. All right, I got to get to that drop over there. What have I done? I've put myself in better position to get to my drop. Why? Because I'm that much closer. You have tools in your toolbox, right? So the, the coverage element calls for me to get to that drop over there. All right, he takes a big split on me because they're always trying to dick with you with their splits. He takes a big split on me. I got, I got, no, I got a handle, coach. Indian, Indian, Indian. Jet, 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 jet. Right? I've improved my ability to play coverage, not given up anything in the run game, all right? And I've given them something else they got to work on that week. Do you see where we're going with this thing? Very, very, very multiple, all right? Rocket. Rocket is nothing more than taking the mic and putting him on the weak side in an overhang. Guys, those overhang looks, they cause offensive problems. I'm just telling you, right? Now, I know I've, I've never yet met an offensive coach that can't block everything and every play's a touchdown. Uh, somehow it doesn't happen on game day that way, but I know that's the way they believe. They have to. All right, sweat. This is a great front. In college football, it's a great, it's not, you don't see it as much in the pros because of the hash mark. But you take your two great big defense, your, your edge guys, your big outside linebackers, walk the will over outside the Sam. Oh boy, now what are you going to do with the protection? Right? You got to either bring it where you're bringing everybody from the guard over or you got problems. Right? Does that mean they both have to rush? No, it just means that's where they're aligned. Okay, and I'll show you pictures of it as we go, or tape of it as we go. All right, flop sweat. That means we both bring them both weak. Now, we had eight, we had eight, defense, eight fronts, at a nine one with jet, tenth one with rocket, eleventh one with sweat. This is our twelfth front right here. How many techniques are the D lineman playing? Two. Right? Two. Okay, so again, very, very, very multiple. Tough. Just walks the two backers up. Still gives them the same gap, all that stuff. All right? Grizz. Gives you two overhangs off both edges. Again, major challenge, protection-wise. Who's got who? Right? Where, where are you going to go with the protection now? The back's got to block somebody. Right? So you look at it, you got to push the front. Again, not sure which one's coming. Now, let me tell you something. We would run that front right there and bring the safety and play zone, right? They, that quarterback coach is all there talking about all their hot reads and all that stuff. We get into double overhangs and bring the safety and play cover two in the CFL. Can't, no reason why you can't do it. It's still just four guys rushing, right? Right? But they're all locked up in 5-0 protection and they tell the back to you go to the, you, the, you go to the mic and shoom, here comes the safety with nobody on him. Okay, so five minutes. Oh, my gracious. All right, just to recap quickly. Okay, now this is the way you fit the run. All right, flow strong. This is where it's different. We're a gap cancellation defense, but we relate to the ball at linebacker. What does that mean? That means that if I am the front side flow backer, I'm the buck, and it's flow strong. I am always going to play the football off my inside shoulder. If I'm the mic, I'm always going to play the football off my left shoulder in this case if the ball goes there, right? Because what happens is in blocking schemes, guys, it's never clean, right? And, and gaps change. It's a dynamic game, right? I'm not a believer in single gap defense where you just run a guy through a gap on flow because when you do that, what do you do? You lose him. He's buried inside. He can't help you anymore. Defense is based on getting more people to the ball than they can block. It's a numbers game. We need the numbers. Why do they take the ball to the perimeter? Because that's where they've got numbers. All right? So we need to win this way. So if you got flow strong, that's the way, this is the way it's going to look. 
That's how they'll fit on the ball. All right, flow weak, same deal. There's your fits. All right, adding a fourth rusher, very simple. You want to get a fourth rusher going because the base is a three-man rush. All we do is tag his name. So I go, 30, Sam, who's coming? Tell me, coaches, who's coming? Sam, there it is. All right, I go, 30, Buck, who's coming? Buck. I go, 30, Mike, who's coming? All right, I go, 30, Will, who's coming? All right, men, think about what we have accomplished here today. Eight fronts, I don't know how many other looks, four different four-man entries, and they could have come from any position we wanted them on the field, okay? We are an offensive line coach's nightmare, nightmare, all right? And now you got that little squatty-toed guard who has to see all this happening. They want to go fast? Come on, baby, let's go fast, Right? Because the faster you go, the less you can communicate. It's all easy for us. We don't need to huddle. Why do you need to huddle on defense? Right? I don't want to huddle on defense. I like it when they go fast. All right? Now, let's talk about, now we're getting into our blitzes, fifth man rush. All right, so you got to have words that mean something to them. Saw, Sam, and Will. Okay? So if I call 30 saw, what do we know? I got a five man go. Right? Simple. Bang, there it is. All right. 30 smoke, Sam in the mic. 30 wham, Will in the mic. You hearing, it, you hearing the words? Wham, right? I can take a guy who couldn't get out of, who couldn't pass water in college, and I got to get him ready to play in a game in a, three days. And I got to teach him our blitzes. All he has to know whether he's the M word or the W word. And if it's a W word, I go. Right? That's simple. Simple, simple, simple. It's a, it's this, the game is meant for that. All right? All right, blood, both inside backers, B for both. Stab, the Sam and the Buck. All right? There's, there, you, Bo, the, the Buck and the Will. All right? You can make up as many as you want to make up. Now, I want to show it to you here on tape so you can see it. Oh, my gracious. How do I close it? Oh, end show. Bear with me, because I got to get into the tape. Now, does it make sense to you? Because it, it needs to make sense to you. Guys, I'm telling you, you can teach your whole blitz package in one, pr one practice, right? If I got four of you guys up, give me four guys up here. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, stand over there, you're the will. You're the, you're the mic. Come on, Buck. Oh, you're the buck, you're the mic. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a word. You gotta go, all right? Raise your hand if you're a blitzer. Saw, who's blitzing? Good, all right? Wham, who's blitzing? Okay, blood, who's blitzing? Okay. Stab, who's blitzing? Sam and the buck. Wham, who's blitzing? Will in the mic, okay? See how simple it is? See how simple it is? We, how many blitzes did we just teach? Right there. Now, entry points and how you blitz and all that stuff, that's the fine detail stuff which we'll cover in the room, right? Because I'm telling you, man, I believe this firmly in my heart. This is a horrible thing to say, so I don't, but I, I got to say it because it's true. Most people don't have any earthly idea how to blitz. None. None, 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 none. They don't know how to attack protection, and they don't know how to attack the quarterback. We'll go in that room in there, and we'll teach you. Okay, can I get this thing up? I want to show just a, just a little bit. Just to give you a little taste. Ah. All right. Ah. How many defensive coaches in the room? I'm looking for an answer here. Three? You got three? What the hell's going on in this country? Ah. Let me just say, ask you this question. What do your players like to do? They like to attack or they like to sit back? Huh? Hell yeah, they want to attack. Well, here's your way to get them to attack. All right.
Now here's our zero blitzes. These are our safety blitzes. You can see we ran a bunch of them. I don't know how to open that thing up. Does anybody know how to open that up bigger? All right. Now, again, guys, you're going to see we bring, this is what we call snake. All right. It's an it's a inside blitz with an overhang. Any of you computer guys that want to open that thing up for me, I appreciate it. All right. Watch again as you watch this. We do a lot of things off the time clocks, right? If you watch an offense, invariably they fall into habits, right? During, we have one guy that's responsible for knowing when the ball is snapped every play. In general, the quarterback will get the ball from the center about the same time. So normally it's four seconds left on the play clock. So we time our movements based upon his movement, all right? Here again, here it comes. And you can see, guys, how many free runners. I don't know why I can't open that up. I, you can see how many free runners we get. We call free runners guys that aren't blocked right to the quarterback. Now, again, man, this is, quarter, this is pro football. This isn't guys just doing it as a summer job. Now, these are all, this is good and bad because this is all we did. So you're going to get a bunch of it. Yep. All right, I got to stop. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take it in the other room for those guys that want to see it in more detail. I appreciate it. We'll grow from this as we go during the weekend. Please come armed with questions. I can't stop it. Please, <laughs> please come armed with questions because I'm going to tell you what. Once you get it, because I didn't invent it, fellas, but it was given to me. And once you get it, man, are you going to have fun. Because the limits are only in the player's ability to learn and your ability to teach. You can do things that, I'm going to tell you, you just, it'll be like, wow. It's one of those, as, as Adidas says, it'll be one of those oh shit experiences, right? You'll have, you'll have more fun coaching. They'll have more fun playing. Thank you.